All right, okay. So basically, we started off with the 11th chapter in the last week. We have discussed ratios and we were talking about proportions in the last class, okay? So I told you that we have two types of things basically. We have direct and indirect proportions and we are already done with direct proportions. Let's talk about some examples from indirect proportions and then things would get clear. Those who have just joined, I'll just give a quick recap of this uh, stuff. Okay. In proportions, we are basically looking at two quantities at a time. And we see if I increase one of the two quantities, what would happen with the other one? For example, if I talk about this example right here, so here the idea was that, that let's say speed is fixed. My speed is fixed. If I will take more time to cover distance, for example, let's say I am traveling with 10 kilometers per hour. Now, if I will take more time, I would be able to cover more distance. And if I will take less time, I would be able to cover less difference or distance. Okay. So since for more time, I was covering more distance and for less time, I was covering less distance since the quantities were working in the same way. When I was reducing the first quantity, the second was uh, reduced automatically. So this is what direct proportion is. But if I talk about indirect proportion, so imagine that now my distance is fixed. This way or the other, I need to cover 10 miles. Now, if I uh, would take more time in covering those 10 miles. This means that my speed would be less. And if I am covering those 10 miles quickly in less time, this would imply that my speed is more. So this is basically something that we discussed in the last class in order to understand direct and indirect proportions. Okay. Let me admit uh, some more students because they are messaging me now. Okay, all right. So this was discussed with the old students. If any new student has some query about it, you guys are more than welcome. You can ask me, okay? After this, we did some questions for the direct proportion. And now we are going to talk about indirect proportion and then some past paper questions, okay? So then things would get clear automatically. Okay, for indirect proportion, the more used word is inverse proportion. Okay, now imagine that you have been told y is inversely proportional to x. For now, just forget about the concept between inverse proportion, direct proportion. You guys know in direct proportion, if I'm increasing one quantity, the other is increasing. If I'm decreasing one quantity, the other is decreasing. And in inverse, it's opposite. If I'm increasing, the other is decreasing. If I'm decreasing the first one, the other one would increase. But if this increase or decrease thing is not helping you if you guys are getting confused forget it okay we have a fixed method to solve these questions and once you guys solve a few questions you would get a better idea just know if the statement says that y is inversely proportional to x, how do we write it down in maths? Okay, this is what we need to discuss. So y is inversely proportional. This is the proportionality sign. We use the same sign for direct proportion as well. But for direct proportion, it was y is directly proportional to x. But whenever you would have inversely proportional, instead of writing down x, I would be writing down 1 by x x okay so now you can think about it this way that y is inversely proportional to x or y is proportional to one by x okay but let's stick to one concept for direct proportion i would have written y is proportional to x and this is y is inversely proportional to x okay this is how we write it down for indirect or inverse proportion 
we use both the words okay but most of the time we will be using inverse okay and now you guys know well when we remove this proportionality sign and when we write down equal to sign a proportionality constant is introduced and everything else remains the same okay so whenever i will get rid of this i would be writing down equal to and then i'll be multiplying k on the right side same happened in direct proportion as well let me just quickly go back and explain this idea okay so it said y is directly proportional to x so i wrote this thing and in order to remove the proportionality sign i wrote equals to and then i multiplied the k on the other side okay this is how it is if it's directly proportional i'll be using i'll be writing down directly and if it's inversely proportional i'll take the reciprocal of the other quantity and i'll be writing it down this way this is x okay this is x so this is how we will be interpreting this statement okay all right things would get better let's talk about a question and you guys would be able to understand everything now i won't spend in talking about some uh, basic examples we are done with the basic stuff let's talk about a uh, question similar to past papers okay it says now this is question number 1 for inverse proportion okay i did not ask if you guys were able to understand anything or not so far just listen to me just listen to this example and then i'll address your queries okay for now let's just talk about this question okay it says seven men can dig a trench in 5 hours okay so seven men can dig a trench in 5 hours how long will it take three men to dig the same trench okay now why did i say uh, it's a past paper style question because in the past paper questions or in the actual exam the examiner yes can tell you if it's direct proportion or inverse proportion but most of the times he is just going to give you a scenario and you guys need to think about it on your own okay now how are we going to think about it i tell you it says seven men can dig a trench in 5 hours okay so we have seven men and then we have the time that it takes for uh, the time that for seven men take to dig a trench that was 5 hours so if you think about it technically if we will have more men less time would be used to dig the trench and if we have less men more time would be used to dig the trench it makes sense right obviously it makes sense so using logic i know this is indirect or inverse proportion so now i'll solve it okay it says how long will it take three men to dig the same trench okay all right let's talk about it now i know that the number of men is inversely proportional to the time taken for digging the trench okay that makes sense if i have more number of men less time would be required if i have less number of men more time would be required so men is inversely proportional to the time taken this is going to be my relationship and i can write it as m equals k by t okay so first of all i need to find the equation using this number and this number i am going to plug in the number of men and number of hours for one scenario and that would give me the value of k so 7 is equal to k divided by 5 
and this would give me k equals 35 and my standard equation is going to be m equals 35 by t. Why did I make this equation? I made this equation because this is going to help me find out the number of men if time is given, the hours of time if numbers, number of men is given, right? This is why I made this equation, okay. So M is equal to 35 by T. Now the question was, how long will it take three men to dig the same trend? So I have three men now. Three equals 35 by T. T would be equal to 35 by three. And this is going to give me, you can just, uh, you know, do the division. This would give you the answer in decimals. And this is going to be 11.67 hours, okay? Now, ideally, since this would come in paper one, let's talk about division as well. 35 and three. So it's going to be 11 times, it's 33, and then the difference is of two. So good idea would be instead of rounding off the answer, let's just write down the answer as a mixed number, okay? So it would be 11 whole, two divided by three, hours. This is going to be the answer. Any confusions with this? Yes, anyone? Please oh, ask me now. Yes, can you go now in the second and guess it? One second. Say it, say it now. Miss, can you please explain it again? For some reason, I did not catch it. Definitely, definitely. Okay, I, I can certainly explain it again. Don't worry, okay? This was the question. The question was, seven men can dig a trench in five hours. How long will it take three men to dig the same trench? So first of all, you were able to notice that here, they're talking about two quantities. It's about the number of men and about the... Uh, about the time required for digging the trench. These are the two quantities. Think about it. If it's direct proportion or indirect proportion, how would you think about it? Now you know. If you will have more number of men, the time required for digging the trench would be less because you would be having more men, okay? And if you have less number of men, the time required for digging the trench would be more. Since when you are increasing the first quantity, the other quantity is decreasing. And when you are decreasing the first quantity, the other quantity is increasing means that this has an indirect proportion or an indirect relationship. So we were able to write it down. Number of men is inversely proportional to time taken. And mathematically, I can write it down this way. M is inversely proportional to time. Okay, this is how we write it down for inverse proportion. And when I will remove the proportionality sign, I would write down equal to and I would multiply this constant on the right side, okay? Now, I had an idea about it that seven men would take five hours. So, when M is equal to seven, T was five. So, I just plugged in M as seven and T as five. This was the thing and I got K equals 35. And this was the equation that was relating M and T. For inverse proportion, you will have to find out, and even for direct proportion, you'll have to find out that equation that is linking both the quantities by finding out the value of the proportionality constant, okay? Now, when I had this equation, things were very easy. The question was, how long will it take three men to dig the same trench? So this was the relationship. I just plugged in three here. I made T the subject and I got this as the number of hours. Yes, is it okay now? Just take your time to process it. No need to rush. Uh, teacher, how how did T is it, uh, how did uh, 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 Three is equal to 30, 35 divided by t become t is equal to 35 divided by 3. One second, one second. This was basically 7 multiplied by 5. I got k as 35 and this was clear, okay? Now I know that 
number of men was three. So I think you're talking about this thing. Okay. I did it over here. It was 35 divided by 3. I know that 3 multiplied by 11 is 33. I wrote 33. And then the difference was 2. So it would be 11 whole. The quotient comes here. The remainder comes here. And then the divisor comes here. Okay. This is going to be the max number. Yes, Omaiza, I'll answer your question very well done. I, I was about to come on the same thing. Very, very good question. But before that, just tell me if any other student has issue with this thing. Yes. Okay. All right. Now, just give me one second. When we were discussing direct proportions, this was the question. Things would get better. Two meters of wire cost $10. Find the cost of a wire with the length of H meters. Again, the question is not stating if it's direct proportion or indirect proportion. We had to understand the logic that if I'll be buying more wire, more cost would be required. And if I'll be buying less wire, less cost would be required. This makes sense, right? This means when I was increasing one quantity, the other quantity was also increasing. So this was direct proportion. Just focus on method one for this one. Y was directly proportional to X. And when I removed this proportionality sign, I wrote equal to. And step one was to find the value of this K using the given piece of information. Now, I was told that two meters was costing around $10. So I used this logic and I got K equals five. And this was the equation that linked both the quantities. And then I could find any other thing using this equation that was relating both the quantities. Okay, this was method two. And I told you that here we had method one as well, where I just considered ratios. I just said length to cost. I wrote this standard ratio, which I made using the information given that two meters costed $10. So H meters would cost X dollars. I cross multiplied and I got the answer. But if I apply method one for indirect proportion, I would not get the correct answer. Let's try doing it. Okay, let's try doing it through method one. Or let's say method two. That basically was about the ratio method. So number of men ratio time taken to dig the trench okay now the given stuff was that seven men can dig a trench in five hours so seven ratio five okay seven ratio five and i was told that three men uh, uh, three, uh, I was asked to find out how much time would be required for three men. So three men and this quantity was unknown. So now let's cross multiply and see. Now when I will cross multiply, I would get 7x equals 15 and x would be equal to 15 by 7. And this certainly is not the correct answer. Why isn't the correct answer? Because... The ratio method can only be used for direct proportion. In order to solve the questions with indirect proportion or inverse proportion, that is the same thing, you are only supposed to find out the equation that would connect both the variables. And how do we do that? So this was a scenario. I removed proportionality sign. I introduced equals to and I multiplied K. And I used the given piece of information like 7 and 5 to find out the value of K. And this was the equation that I need to make every time in order to find the other quantity. Okay. And then I was able to do it. So this is going to be a fixed method for inverse proportion. We cannot do it using the ratio method for inverse. We can only apply the ratio method for direct proportion. Right. Now tell me if you have any other question. Ariba, Hassan, Moiz, no, no. Uh, Musa, Noshevan, Taha. I understand. No. No, no questions. Okay. All right. Umayza, because when we apply the ratio method, 
we cross multiply and the way we cross multiply this is how things are in direct proportion okay in inverse proportion we have this reciprocal that is why our answer is not matching okay that is why we can't use the ratio stuff for inverse proportion Okay, all right. So now let me just go back and take out some past paper questions to understand things better. Okay, now the first thing is that all these questions, I just took all of them from paper one. You can find a question or so in paper two as well. Uh, but most of the times su such questions would come in paper one. And yes, obviously, it could be that you have a big question and there you are using this idea, but you know, for like um, the basic questions are most of the times in paper one. Okay. Let's talk about it now. All right. Okay. So it's question number seven and it says, Y is inversely proportional to the square of X. Okay. All right. Now this is given. Why? is inversely proportional so why proportionality sign square of x means i can write it as x squared so y is inversely proportional to x squared so i can write it as y the proportionality sign one divided by x squared okay i hope that this thing is clear now even if it's direct proportion or indirect proportion the sign would be for um, the, this is this is the proportionality sign. The difference is basically over here for inverse or indirect. Same thing, but two different words. I'll be writing down the reciprocal of the second quantity. The second quantity was square of x, so I can write it as x squared. Okay. Given that y is twenty four when x is two, find y when x is eight. All right. Now y is equal to k by x squared i've removed the proportionality sign and i got this equal to sign and after this i need to find out the value of k in order to see the relationship between both the quantities so i'll do that using this 24 and this 2. So 24 is equal to K by two and K is equal to 48, okay? I got the value of K as 48. 48 is basically my, uh, 48 is the value of the proportionality constant, okay? Um, um, yes? Y is inversely proportional to square of x. Yes, yes, yes. But you just use square I agree, of I agree. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, you're right. Very well said. Very good. This would be uh, 2 squared and I am going to get 24 multiplied by 2 squared. That was 4 equals k. So k is going to be 24 multiplied by 4. You can do that. Uh, by multiplying it on the other side, this is 96. Now, my equation is going to be y equals 96 by x squared. So, you need to find the value of y when x is 8. So, y is equal to 96 divided by 8 squared. So, it would give you 96 divided by 64. And what you can do is you can just simplify it. Uh, either you can give the answer in decimal or you can give the answer directly as well. Because in the marking scheme, the answer is 96 by 64. Okay. So this is going to be the answer. All right. Any uh, difficulties with this one? No, ma'am. Very good. No, sure, Vaan, no, your answer was correct. Very well done. Okay. And what about the other students? Okay, I hope that this no question... questions. Okay, all right. So this question was clear. Let's talk about this one. Now this is a bit technical, but we would be able to do that. Let me just let's do this one first, and then we'll do the previous one. Okay, let's keep the difficult questions for the last. Okay, 
the exchange rate between pound and dollars is one pound equals one point six zero dollars. Amit changes two hundred pounds to dollars. Calculate the number of dollars he receives. Now, this is basically a separate chapter. That's called money, but the idea is same. So we won't be doing that chapter because the same idea is used there for every question. Now, what's happening? You have been told that you know this is the exchange rate for pounds and dollars. One pound is equal to one point six zero dollars, and you need to find how many. Dollars are equivalent to two hundred pounds. Okay, now one thing is obvious. If you will have more pounds, you would get more dollars. If you have less pounds, you would get less dollars. This means that there is a direct relationship. Okay, even if you don't want, if you if you are not interested in finding out if it's direct or indirect, you can see that you can use the ratio method to find out the dollars equivalent to two hundred pounds. Okay. So this one is for pounds, and this is for dollars. Now I know that one pound is basically giving me one point six zero dollars. So two hundred pounds would give me X dollars. I am only supposed to cross multiply at this point, and this is going to give me X equals. Two hundred multiplied by one point six zero. Please do this multiplication without calculator. This is also important. So how do we do it? Just do two hundred multiplied by two sixty, and then just write down the decimal after two numbers. Okay. Please do that quickly because this is also important. The answer is thirty-two uh, now. Three twenty. Three twenty. Right. Because you need to multiply, I'll tell you. You did two hundred multiplied by one point six. That's perfect. If you are doing two hundred multiplied by one point six, how do we do it? We do it two hundred multiplied by sixteen. And when you will do this multiplication, this is going to give you thirty two hundred. And since we had one decimal place, so you will just write down the zero after one decimal place, and it's going to be three twenty. Okay, it's going to be three twenty. Okay, all right. This was some extra stuff just so you guys get good at multiplication as well. Very good. It would be three twenty. So the answer is going to be three twenty dollars. Okay, all right. This was the first part. For the second part, it says Aisha changes. Two forty dollars to pounds. Calculate the number of pounds she receives. Again, the same idea. Pounds, dollars. One pound is equal to one point six zero dollars. It looks like pound as well. Okay, so it was two forty, and this is x. Let's do that now, and this is going to give me. Two forty equals one point six zero x. So x is going to be two forty divided by one point six, and the answer is going to be one fifty pounds. Okay, this is going to be the answer. Yes. Any difficulties with this question? Anything that you guys were not able to understand? No difficulty. Okay, all of you. No difficulty. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about this question now. This this is what I basically wanted to do. Okay. Now the question says a car manufacturer states that a particular car uses five liters of fuel in traveling hundred kilometers, produces one ten grams of carbon dioxide for each kilometer traveled. Use this information to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced by one liter of fuel. Okay. Please take a minute and try understanding the question, and then I'll talk about the solution. Just try understanding the question. Okay. Just read it and try understanding it.
Yes, well done, Taha. Very well done. Excellent. Yes, very good, Nosharwan. Your answer is also correct. Okay, this means that you guys were able to do this very easily. Okay. Um, we have been told that five liters of fuel were basically used to travel 100 kilometers. Okay, so fuel used ratio distance traveled. Okay, this is the first thing. So, five liters were used to travel 100 kilometers. And then the second thing is carbon dioxide produced. CO2 is basically carbon dioxide. Ratio distance traveled, okay? So this was 110 grams of carbon dioxide and just one kilometer of distance. So the question was, use this information to calculate the mass of carbon dioxide produced by one liter of fuel. So first of all, I need to find out how much distance would be traveled using one liter of fuel. And then I will use that in the other ratio. So one liter fuel X, okay. This would give me 5x equals 100 and x is going to be 20. So 20 kilometers of distance would be traveled, okay? So 20 kilometers of distance and how much carbon dioxide, this is what I need to find. Again, I will be cross multiplying and this is going to give me 20 multiplied by 110 equals X. And this would be 2200 grams of carbon dioxide. But the question was, you need to answer in kgs. So this value is in grams. In order to convert it to kgs, I'll divide it by 1000 and it would give me 2.2 kgs. So the answer would be 2.2 kgs, okay? In maths or physics, the units are very important and most of the times the examiner would be writing down the units as well. But if he is not giving you the units, let's say if it's speed, it's distance, it's time, you need to write down the units because it could be that some of you just forget this part and you guys just write down 2200. Now you need to write down grams at least to get that one mark because that would tell the examiner that you know how to find out the mass, but you did not know how to convert the mass from grams to kgs, okay? This is why writing down units is important. Also this time around units were written, but for future reference, if the units are not there, you need to write it down. Otherwise, anything that you were not able to understand in this question, please ask me. Understood. Um. Okay, all right, okay, perfect. So these were some questions from uh, direct, indirect proportions and ratios. And now we have one last thing that we need to discuss. So let's talk about that quickly. Okay. We need to talk about the equivalent ratios now. Okay. Let me write it down. It's very easy. It's not difficult. To attain equivalent ratios involving fractions, we have to multiply or divide the numbers of the ratio by the LCM. Okay. This idea would get clear after talking about this question. One by four cup of sugar, one whole one by two cups of flour, 
and five by six cups of water. are needed to make a cake, okay? Express the ratio using whole numbers. Okay, all right. Now, please understand this. One fourth cup of sugar, one whole one by two cup of flour, and five by six cups of water are needed to make a cake. Okay. Now I can see that the ratio of ingredients is one by four, ratio one whole one by two, ratio five by six. This is basically the ratio of all the ingredients. This is for sugar, this is for flour, and this is for water. But the examiner says, express the ratio using whole numbers. I don't have whole numbers. I have fractions. I need to find an equivalent ratio that has whole numbers only. So how do we do that? The idea is very simple. We would be taking the LCM just like we solve um, fractions and then things would get clear okay all right so let me write it down more properly it's one by four ratio one whole one by two can be written as three by two ratio five by six okay i need to take the lcm of four two and six let's do that it's four two and six, it's two, it's two, it's one, it's three, it's two, one, one, and three, and then it's three, one, one, and one. So two multiplied by two multiplied by three would give me 12, okay? So all the denominators are now going to be 12. One second, one second. We have multiple ways once again, okay. The LCM turned out to be 12, okay. Now, ideally, what you can do is, instead of making the denominator same and multiplying the same thing with that, yes, after doing a few more steps, you would be able to get the whole number there, but a better understanding could be that since 4, 2, and 6 give 12 as the LCM, so if I multiply, all three with 12, I would be able to cancel out 4, 2, and 6, okay? I'll multiply this by 12. I'll multiply this by 12. I'll multiply this by 12. And this is going to give me 3. Then 1 and 6. This would give me 18. 1 and 2. And this would give me 10. So this is going to be the answer. So whenever you have ratio this is also right this is also right and both these ratios are equivalent like if i use this or this i would get the same answer but in order to have ratios in whole numbers i need to multiply all the ratios with a number and that number is going to be the lcm of these three denominators okay this is what I've done and I got 3, 18 and 10 as the answer. Any difficulties with this? Anything that you would like to ask? No, ma'am. What about the other students? No, no difficulties. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay, let me stop.